In reading through these problems, I can see that we're going to be using our letter K in the equation because I see the directly proportional or varies directly in the problems. So as you write these up, um, you're thinking about using that letter um, along with the letters mentioned in the problem. So for this one, uh, the number of centimeters of water depth W produced by melting snow is, so we're going to start out with W equals directly proportional to the number of centimeters of snow depth S. Right. So from here we're trying to find K. So they're going to give me the next set of information that I plug in. If W is 15.9 centimeters when the snow depth is 150, solve for K right now before you go on and plug in anything else. So it's hooked by multiplication, unhooked by division, divide both sides by 150. And you're going to get K as 0.106. Don't round that to 0.11 or 0.1. Um, if it's you know a terminating decimal, use all the decimal points. So then we go to write the equation to answer the rest of the problem. So W equals, so we found our constant of proportion or slope, if you will, 0.1. 0, 06, and then it was S. So then we go through and find how many centimeters of water, <clears throat> excuse me, um, are produced with 100 centimeters of melting snow. So we're looking for W, and you're plugging in the 100 for S now. So this comes up 10.6. And then the unit label on it for our snow, um, our rather our water depth, was centimeters. So that's going to be our final answer. Make sure again you put the unit label on there. For the next question, similar idea. Set up an equation, find the constant of proportionality, then answer the question. So we're going to start out with this. Y is directly proportional to x. Then they give me some information to find k. Solve for k, divide off by 2, get the k by itself, then plug the k back into your original equation, and then that's the equation that you're going to use to answer this last piece here. Find y, so we're going to use our 24 when x is 5. So when you multiply that out, you come up with 120. There's no units labels on it, so it's just the number 120. For example, 16, still finding that constant of proportionality first. So y is directly proportional, but now it's to the square of x. So I'm going to put in x squared. Then the same idea, plug in your first set of data. y is 48. But now be careful, because when you plug in the number 2, you've got to square it. So we have 48 equals k times 4, divide off by 4. So your k is 12, but you're going to plug that k back into your original problem here. So we have y equals 12, and then don't forget there was a square on the x. So now when I go to plug in this last bit of information here, I'm going to square that 5. And then just go ahead and use your calculator to come up with 300. Okay. 
So there's a bit of a pattern going on here. You go for that sort of general equation, plug in, answer the question. This one, they don't give me a whole lot of information. You're pedaling your bike um, into the wind, force exerted uh, upon you. This force, so we're going to call that F, is directly proportional to the wind velocity squared. And our wind velocity is being represented by V, and then we've got to square it. That's the relationship. Now, they didn't give me any numbers to plug in to find K, so this is as far as I go for part A. For part B, if the wind velocity, so that's V, doubles, by how much does the wind force go up? So for this one, if I double the V, so right now there's just a V in there, but if I make it two V's and square it, all right, now we're going to use our laws of exponents, square the two, square the V, and normally we put the number in front, so I have force equals 4 kV squared. Notice the original was kV squared, but when I doubled the velocity here, I ended up putting a 4 in front of that. So I've actually quadrupled what I started with. Or you can say that it increases by a factor of 4. Or you could say it quadruples um, your wind force either way.